New neighbours who are already discovering the inconvenience involved in living next door to a place seen as a honeypot for people who want to better themselves. Newsnight has had exclusive access to the camps which the Ukraine has been forced to set up to cope. Tristana Moore reports. The Carpathian Mountains form a natural frontier with Europe and an escape route for refugees dreaming of a better life. In this remote corner of western Ukraine, cut off from the outside world, lies the detention center of Pavshino. We were allowed into the camp with our Ukrainian minders. The conditions are miserable. There's only one makeshift water supply outside in the freezing cold. The detainees use the same water to drink and to wash. Sanitation is pretty basic. If you talk to the Ukrainian authorities, this is a temporary camp for illegal immigrants picked up at the border. To these people, some of whom have been here for months, it's a prison. We were shown inside. Ten men share this room. They thought that we are animals. You know, they give the, the, food, uh, the dogs the food before us. They, they related with the, with the dogs better than the people. Our family, nobody you knows our family where we are. They are in jail. We say for them, we want to speak our family. They say, okay, we, everything, promise, 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 nothing. Every day they tell us, uh, tomorrow you go, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Just saying, no one, mm -hmm. you can believe in. Mm -hmm. okay. So we are here, we don't know what to do, yeah. what to do. Many of these people have been here since the detention centre opened last August. They have no idea what's going to happen to them, whether they'll be deported or granted asylum. But one thing they do know, and that is that they don't want to stay here in Ukraine. Abdullah Hassan is 14. He's from Somalia. He fled the country by boat with his brother and sister. A member of a minority tribe, Abdullah said he had no other option but to leave. I left to Somalia because uh, there are war, there's more war, so nobody can live in Somalia. So when I was left in, in when I was left in Somalia, I didn't decide to go any country. I decided only to go a place that I can get a safe for myself. Abdullah says he didn't choose to come here. He paid a gang of smugglers to get him out of Somalia to take him to Western Europe. If they send me back to Somalia, it's not good for me. Instead of going back to Somalia, I'm ready to die. The Ukrainian authorities have just 60 p a day to feed and house each detainee. Tensions have been running so high that in September a riot broke out. The humanitarian situation is such that uh, we feel that attention should be brought to the situation and assistance should be given to the Ukrainian uh, government and the border guards to help uh, house and uh, feed and look after these people properly. Some of the detainees have fled persecution. Others are economic migrants. It's often difficult to distinguish between the two. In this room, I, with, the, with the, uh, two Iranian and one uh, Tunisian and one uh, Palestinian. Haider Musawi is a GP. Only several months ago, he was working at a hospital in Baghdad. Haider wants to be a cardiologist, but there was no chance of doing that in Iraq. I leave the Iraq uh, by a legal way. Haider paid £5,000 to get out of Iraq. His aim was to reach Austria, but instead he was dumped at the border of Ukraine. The mafia uh, leave me and uh, were there for five minutes. After five minutes, the police came and uh, put me in the jail. This is their jail for now. Resigned to their fate, they blame themselves. It is no good condition, but it is my fault, not uh, the Ukrainian fault, because I am came to here, and other people came to It's our fault.
sandwich between Europe and Asia, Ukraine has become a crossroads for illegal immigrants. They come from India, China, Afghanistan, the Middle East, and North Africa. Those from the East enter Ukraine through its porous border with Russia. Others arrive by boat from the Black Sea. Their aim is to travel across the former Soviet Republic towards Europe. And as the EU expands eastwards, taking in Ukraine's neighbors, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, and eventually Romania, Ukraine will become the last stop for those trying to reach the West. To get a glimpse of some of the problems Ukraine has, you only have to travel to its border with Slovakia. There's not much in the way of security. There's a fence and a bit of barbed wire. So far this year, 20,000 illegal immigrants were detained in Ukraine, heading for Western Europe. But the border guards we spoke to here reckon they've only caught half the number who get across. Hardly surprising then that the European Union is keen to help out. Under a new action plan, it's pledged around 10 million pounds to buy more vehicles and infrared detectors for border crossings. But the Ukrainian government hasn't seen any of that extra cash yet. But it's not just a question of strengthening the border. The Ukrainian authorities are struggling to cope with processing those illegal immigrants who they managed to catch. Do you think the Ukrainian authorities can cope with the problem at the moment? No, at the moment, no. They are uh, overwhelmed by this, and uh, they are, you know, this is a, a sort of a new problem for them, and uh, they, uh, you know, have not uh, really, uh, don't have in place the necessary procedures to manage the the people that are being caught. You know, this is why you have detention centers where you have minimum standards, obviously. The picture you get here in Ukraine is one of utter chaos and confusion. International aid organizations have told us there is effectively no process to deal with illegal immigrants and asylum seekers in Ukraine. There are three separate bodies trying to grapple with the problem. You've got the Ministry of Interior, you've got the State Committee for Nationalities and Migration, and then the border guards. And since the start of this year, not one person has been granted refugee status. Border guards at a ceremony to remember the victims of the Second World War. Six million Ukrainians were killed as their country was besieged on two fronts by German forces and the Red Army. More than 50 years on, as an independent republic, Ukraine is now looking to build closer ties with the West and the European Union. Ukraine's President Kuchma is desperate to join the rich man's club. But two weeks ago, his hopes were crushed when the European Commission President Romano Prodi said he saw no reason to consider the country's membership. The worry for Ukraine is that as it's left out of the new enlarged European Union, and as that new bloc strengthens its eastern borders, the former Soviet Republic will become a magnet for illegal immigrants. I думаю, що питання стає в іншому. Поток нелегальних мігрантів він буде таким, яким був, але в зв'язку з посиленням прикордонного режиму і пов'язаним з рішенням Європейського Союзу, то може відбутися така ситуація, що буде збільшення концентрації нелегальних мігрантів на території України. The more the borders are um, are sealed or controlled uh, on the western side, the more people will be uh, detained in Ukraine and, and uh, the more this, this problem will increase.
back at Pavshino, the detainees are getting ready for their evening meal. The Ukrainian border guards know we're coming, so they've laid on a special dinner for a select group, right down to the chef in his outfit. The only thing that gives it all away is the soldier at the window keeping guard. Outside, there's anger, and the detainees are keen to show us what they say is the only food they get here. One in the morning, one morning. And this is the bread, you see? This is just this, this piece. In fact, the food isn't that different, yet it's a vivid example of the futility of the situation here. The Ukrainian authorities can't afford to look after these men. And these men who've traveled across the world in search of a better future now have little power to improve their lives.